Hello and welcome to another video. In the last one we talked about name tuples and we're going to continue that. We're going to talk some more about name tuples. I'll link that video in the description. Uh, today we're going to be talking about name tuples in JSON, which is a common pitfall when working with them. And I'm going to show you one way to work around this, though you probably want to use data classes or something else instead. Uh, but if you're stubborn like me, this is what you're going to do. So let's jump into that. Okay, so this is an example we had last time, the same user class that we had before, et cetera, et cetera, get users, blah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to delete this code so that we can just run this interactively without it printing every time because that gets annoying after a while. And I'm going to show you some of the problems that we have with name tuples in JSON. So if we import JSON and we make a user, you know, Anthony 29 California again, we have our user. Uh, you'll notice that I, when I try and dump this user to JSON, we end up with a little bit of a strange output. If we do json.dumps user, I'll actually print that so we <clears throat> don't have the double quoting here. You'll notice that it turned my user object, which you might think of more as a mapping, uh, it turned that into a list. And the reason for this, and this is actually like <laughs> one of the most common pitfalls of name tuple, is that because name tuple is a tuple, any function which treats tuples, you know, specially, will also treat name tuples specially. So you'll notice here that if I do json.dumps user, we get this list object here. That's the same as if we had done json.dumps of a tuple, you know, in fact, that same tuple here. <clears throat> I think that's the right number of parentheses. Yeah, so you'll see that it actually treated my named tuple the same as the tuple, the underlying tuple value. And so that's, that's kind of a problem in a lot of cases. And I'll show you one way that you can get around that. And named tuples have this fancy uh, way to convert them into dictionaries. So you can use this as dict method. Now note it starts with an underscore, which is a little bit weird in Python. Usually when methods start with underscores, you should avoid them because they're private implementation detail. However, name tuple took a bit of a different approach here in that it didn't want to conflict with any name that could exist in the user's namespace. And so any of the uh, specialized public name tuple uh, attributes are all prefixed with an underscore. So even though this looks like a private method, it is not actually a private method. And so if you wanted to, uh, you know, get this same mapping format in JSON, you would do json.dumps and we'll actually indent it by two spaces so that you can see it a little, a little bit better. And you can see here that it has converted my name tuple object, which it originally represented as a list to now representing as a mapping type. Now there's some other methods as well that are underscored um, and the tab completion doesn't actually do that all that well. Uh, but yeah, you can see like, you can get out the fields if you wanted to get the list of that there. You can also get the field types because it's a typed named tuple. You can also look at the field defaults, um, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. But, oh, there's also fields defaults. <laughs> My guess is one of these is deprecated and will be going away eventually, but it's kind of funny that you have both of the, uh, <laughs> both of the spellings there. <clears throat> but anyway, that's how you can convert a name tuple into a dictionary and then as a mapping type in JSON. Hopefully this is useful. If you guys have additional stuff you want to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.